everyone welcome back so i recently added a site to ezoic and like always i had some moments where i felt pretty much like a technological moron but i did manage to get everything set up and ads are actually live on the site now and i thought i would share five of the things that i learned or maybe you could call them takeaways from having gone through this experience in february of 2021. Right now, it is February of 2021. At this time, I currently have two sites with Ezoic. These are both small sites. One of my sites I added in December of 2019, and the other I added in April or so of 2020. It's been a while since I've added a new site. The site that I added that gave rise to this video is actually my MEGA site. That's my Make the Internet Great Again project. And if you want to follow along as I build this month on month, the link is in the description to the playlist. First, one of the things I noticed is that Ezoic has made some pretty significant changes to the user experience in going through and applying and bringing your site from the, you know, adding it to the dashboard phase to the getting ads turned on phase. While I still think it might be confusing for someone who is a brand new user, someone who has been through this process a few times, like me, it, I found it helpful. There were a lot more videos, a lot more explanations, and there were some things that I was just locked out of and I couldn't mess with and I couldn't mess up because I hadn't completed the steps that came before that that are important. To be honest though, I think people who are very tech phobic may still struggle some going through each of these steps, but you can see how Ezoic has tried really hard to put more content in there and put more help in there for the folks that just this isn't intuitive for them. The next thing I wanted to point out is there's no like apply moment. Basically, as soon as you have typed in the URL and hit the add button, but before you integrate or do anything else, there are processes that start on the Ezoic side to start vetting your site. Some of these are automated, and some of these are humans. My Mika site had over 40 posts when I added it a few days ago, but I hadn't yet built out, you know, the home page or any of the category pages. So if somebody went to the home of the domain, the primary page, they would have found basically a skeleton of a site with no links for anyone to find their way into the rest of the posts unless they had access to sitemap. So pretty quickly, I got a note from Ezoic that said that my site wasn't eligible because because it didn't have enough content. This wasn't a big deal and it was something that was easily overcome. And I share this for two reasons. One, to make things go the most smoothly. I think when you're applying for any ad network, it's probably a good idea to have the main pages that the humans who are going to look at your site will access, not have a skeleton like I did. They look at a lot of sites in any given day or week and you don't want to give them any reason to just say Bleh. So that's my own fault. Two, what I also learned in that messaging is that if your site doesn't meet the traffic or the content requirements to be approved through Ezoic, they actually ban you or bar you from reapplying for six months. This is something new. I had never heard of it before. And initially it struck me as like, this is a bad idea because, you know, I didn't actually apply for monetization. I just added my domain and maybe somebody is coming in and adding their domain because they want to use the site speed accelerator. And to my knowledge, there is no specific content requirement or traffic requirement to utilize it. So if you're someone that has, you know, six, 7,000 visitors a month and you're working up to 10,000 visitors and you add your domain so that you can use the site speed accelerator. And during the review, the Azoic team marks you as not qualified and then you can't apply to get monetized when you reach the the traffic requirements maybe that will happen in a week or a month or two months from now you have to wait six months like that seems wrong. And talking with Ezoic, it sounds like the reason that six month window is there is because in general, a site that has no traffic and no content probably won't get to that point within six months. So I think they do that to keep you focused on trying to create the content and not you know, hitting like reapply, reapply, reapply anytime you get some more visitors. I also get the feeling that it's not a hard and fast rule. So if you are someone who has enough traffic and you would otherwise qualify, but 
for some reason the system says that you can't be approved for monetization because maybe you added your site before you had 10,000 sessions and now you're there. It sounds like what you can do is reach out to support and let them know that your traffic does meet the requirements. I don't know for sure that it would work. I just wanted to throw that out there for folks so that they wouldn't be confused or maybe freaked out if they saw that notice. And frankly, this is probably all for naught because hopefully in the near future, Ezoic will finish you know, all the beta testing of their, what they're calling their Access Now program so that there will be no minimum traffic requirements. Another thing I wanted to pass on is that as with starting anything new or potentially complex, you need to make sure that you are prepared to be patient. Now, remember when you initially applied to AdSense and you hit the apply button and then you didn't know if you were going to receive a response for, you know, 24 hours or a month. And I'm not saying that Ezoic is that way, but if you are planning on adding your site and get it integrated and get ads up in the same day in 24 hours, I think you are asking for frustration. And naturally that's that's what always happens to me is I have a specific window to get things done and I want to get them done as quickly as possible. And if you go into adding a new site to Ezoic, whether you were a first time user or you were already on the platform, you were asking to be upset. And, and it's only your fault. I went ahead and integrated with the DNS servers. This site in particular is on SiteGround and SiteGround tends to play pretty badly with Ezoic, just in general. I decided to try out the plugin to see if that might make things easier or quicker. And the plugin basically said, nah, you cannot use this plugin with these other features of SiteGround that you have turned on. So I changed the name servers and then proceeded to wait. I did it in the evening and then just put the site away and went to bed. I figured that it would be up and running in the morning. When I got up in the morning in the dashboard, it noted that the site was still not integrated. At midday, it said the site was integrated and that box was checked and I was good to go. So I decided to move ahead with ads, adding the ad placements, and I started getting the origin error. So I went back to the dashboard and started trying to troubleshoot. And then I noted that the integration section had flipped back from fully integrated to still waiting. I was feeling pretty annoyed, not gonna lie, but I put it down and worked on some other things and then came back to it in the evening. So it was at bedtime about 24 hours from when I initially changed the name servers that the site was noted as being fully integrated. And I knew it was finally working because the bot captcha tool in SiteGround had gone crazy like it always does and had locked me out of the site. So then of course at about 12 o'clock, you know, at midnight I was on with support over at SiteGround, which turns out is a great time to reach out to them because they don't have a lot of people reaching out to them at midnight in the middle of the week. And they managed to turn that tool off for me in about five to 10 minutes. And so then at that point, I was fully ready to go. Another thing I learned as I was being patient about waiting for integration that it's pretty much a good idea not to mess around with the stuff that is in Ezoic, like just basically all the rest. Like it says that while you're waiting for integrating that you can go ahead and try to add placeholders. But honestly, I think you should just wait. You know, you can start messing with like the various features and tools, but most of that stuff works the best once integration has been completed. And basically I just ended up feeling annoyed. You might be excited, but just wait until integration is confirmed complete to go on and start working on the other stuff. Just, you'll thank me later, I promise you. So this time around, my third time around adding a site to Ezoic, I did the placeholders myself. Finally, for the first time, I did it all myself and I did it using the Chrome extension. I found that it was actually quite simple and though it took some time to add as many ad units as I want, it, it wasn't that complicated or hard. There's two things that I think you need to do to increase the likelihood that the Chrome extension is going to work. You need to have Ezoic open and logged in on a tab somewhere else on your computer. And then two, you need to be completely logged out of WordPress for that site. If you are logged into your site, into the WordPress dashboard, even if you're open in another window somewhere else trying to work on the Chrome extension, it's not gonna work. So be logged into Ezoic and logged out of WordPress. Anytime I was logged into WordPress, it did not work, like at all. 
have talked about Ezoic and Sightground not playing well together many times on this channel. And what I liked about what Ezoic is doing now in the setup process is when their system realizes that you are on board with Sightground, they actually throw up Sightground specific messaging to let you know that that bot capture tool is going to cause you problems. And basically right away, they let you know, like contact Sightground and ask them to turn that off. And so in the past, usually what I have done is just let the bot capture thing become a problem and then contact Sightground and have them turn it off. But I decided to get ahead of the curb and contact them to support and say, hey, this is going to be a problem. Will you turn it off? And the Sightground support people basically treated me like I was a moron and they refused to do anything. And I said, I know this is going to be a problem. It is a problem on every single site. And in fact, I was on the phone with you guys three days ago getting this turned off on my other sites. Can't you please turn it off? And they're like, no. So thank you, Ezoic, for highlighting that. And if you're on the other end of it, trying to reach out to SiteGround, just know that they may or may not entertain your request to manage that until it shows itself to actually be a problem, which we know that it's going to be. So yeah, those are my takeaways from my recent experience adding a new site to Ezoic. People have different opinions about whether you should wait until a site has a lot of traffic or if you should pursue monetization earlier. In general, I like to pursue monetization sooner because it allows me to work on on my strategies and my content and my site so that when I do have a lot of traffic, it, it works better. And for those folks who are interested in pursuing monetization earlier, as they do from time to time, Ezoic is opening up their, what they're calling the Access Now program. They're opening up 300 spots in their program that is kicking off on February 15th. And this is actually open to folks who do not have accounts with Ezoic and also to folks who do have accounts with Ezoic, but they have a site that does not yet meet the 10,000 sessions requirement. So if you already have a site with Ezoic, but your other sites don't match up, you still can apply to go through this program. I'll be sharing the link on my community page when it opens up. That's February 15th, and the link should be live at 8 a.m. Pacific Los Angeles time. So if you don't make it in this round, there will be another round that they're opening up in March, so you'll want to look for that. Right now, you should be seeing two things on the screen. One is a playlist that links you to all the videos that I have been creating about the Mega site that I started in January of 2021. And the other is to my Ezoic, I wanna call them tutorials, but my experience videos where I sort of bumble my way through getting set up the first time about a year and a half ago.